How many of you exercise on a regular basis? Raise your hand. Feels good, right? But you know that I will say something opposite. Too much exercise can be bad for your body, right? <laughs> because, because of tears and injuries, right? As a matter of fact, our daily life consists of motion and exercise. Just like you stretch your muscles or the heart is beating and pumping blood. That can cause internal injuries. Our body must have a defense mechanism to combat such injuries, without which we will not have a hand, not a heart, not even life. This is a story I'd like to share with you all today. Imagine a person has a heart attack. The blood flow stops. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have a medicine that can be administered on site to save the person's life? Imagine a football player in our team injured on the field with a concussion. What can we do? Our comrade soldier is facing a life-threatening injury on the battlefield in need of an urgent medical care to stop the bleeding and the trauma. An elderly person is suffering on a daily basis of Alzheimer's disease with chronic loss of memory. How can we help? What we need is regenerative medicine, a medical intervention that can either prevent the injury from happening or can repair the injury after its occurrence. Regenerative medicine is the medical, the defense me uh, mechanism for our human bodies. You may be wondering, why I'm showing this picture of a salamander. The salamander is a unique animal species. It has amazing defense capacity. It can repair and regrow a broken limb very quickly and efficiently. Our human body cannot. Now imagine, what if there is a pixie dust you can sprinkle to the wound site or deliver to the body at a time of urgent need that can cure or alleviate the traumatic injury, just like the salamander. Where do we go for such pixie dust, to find such pixie dust? Within our human body, there are approximately 25,000 genes that are distributed in the 23 different chromosomes. As a medical researcher, our task is to identify the function of the individual genes and to understand how they interact together to support life and to build a defense against human diseases. Out of the 25,000 genes, we were able to pinpoint a group of genes, they all consist of the tripartite motif, known as the trim proteins. The trim proteins contains 75 members in our human body. Through serendipity, actually involved a lot of work, we encountered this gene called MG53. Here I illustrate the structure of the gene using the different colored circles. The yellow circle is named the RIN motif, <laughs> which stands for a really interesting new gene. <laughs> it is. Through completion of the genome project, we know that the MG53 gene that present in our human body is nearly the same as those present in all other animal species, such as mice, rats, dogs, pigs, and monkeys. Thus, it deserves the name to be a in really interesting new gene. <clears throat> MG53 
was identified by my co-worker and students about 10 years ago. And we show that it can function as a molecular bandage to repair tissue injury. Shown here are three cells that have been treated with MD53, the pixie dust, which is labeled the bright green color. On the left, you see a cell that is being poked, injured through poking by a needle. You can see that MG53 can sense the injury and quickly move to the injury site to form a repair patch, just like fixing a flat tire. In the middle, you see a cell that has been severed by a knife. Normally, the cell will die, but because of the presence of the MG53, it can quickly seal the border to enable the cell to survive. In the right, you see a cell that has been poked many, many times on the brink of dying. You miraculously, you see that MG53 come to the rescue to reverse the dying process, saying, I am here, you shall not die. We now know that MG53 is a native protein present in our human body, which safely circulates in the bloodstream with one important physiological function, that is to protect our body against injuries. Our task is to translate these basic findings into the treatment of human diseases. Using a more common medical term, we call this a mission of moving from bench to bedside. From a regenerative medicine point of view, we are looking for prophylactic ways to prevent tissue injury or therapeutic ways to treat injuries. Our journey started with testing MG53 in animal models of heart injury. Shown here on the left is a picture of a heart attack in a pig, as evidenced by the appearance of the large pale region, indicating the dying heart cells. On the right, you see a heart that also suffered a heart attack, but has been received MG53 protein via IV infusion. Clearly, this is a much healthier heart. The pale region has disappeared. The heart cells are no longer dying. From this study, we know the value of MG53 can be potentially used to treat human heart diseases. As we age, our body's defense capacity declines, leading to the loss of mobility and memory. Is there a role for MG53 in brain function? Shown here are pictures of mice that has neuromuscular disease which is equivalent to the ALS disease in humans. They cannot move on the left because of injury to the muscle and the neuron and the brain. On the right, you see the littermate mice that also have the same disease, but have been treated with MG53 protein. Look at how active and mobile they are. These findings support the potential value of using MG53 to treat chronic brain injuries in the human disease such as LS or Alzheimer's. Treatment of wounds, especially those non-healing chronic wounds and ulcers, is perhaps the largest medical burden in our society. MG53 protein, in the form of a topical cream, which I have one, can facilitate healing of dermal wounds. In the middle panel, you see an example of a second-degree coffee burn before and after MG53 application. In the right, you see a picture of a chronic injury in an elderly person. You can see that with application of MG53, the wound heals without visible scarring. Mitigation of scarring is one unique feature 
of MG53. These findings shall have important implications to the wound care and the personal care field, where there is a great need for wrinkle and scar reduction. With proper formulation, one can envision that the engineered MG53 protein can be used to treat surgical non-healing wound, diabetic ulcers, pressure ulcers in the elderly. In the battlefield, the soldiers are constantly facing many dangerous situations, ranging from expo exposure to blasts, inhalation of flames, or toxic gases, all of which can cause injury or damage to an important organ in our body, the lungs. We have shown that MG53 can alleviate acute lung injury in animal models. Now imagine if we can develop the protein to treat lung injury to our soldiers in the battlefield. Timely delivery of the medication is very, very critical to the soldiers in the front lines of the battlefield. We envision that MG53 can be developed as the first aid medicine that can be carried by the soldiers in the backpack in the form of an aerosolizer. The soldiers can apply these aerosolizers immediately after injury or even before the injury, just like one would use as inhaler medicine to treat asthma. We know that MG53 protein is very stable as a lyophilizer powder at room temperature. We envision that by attaching the lyophilizer powder to an infusion bag can enable for long-term storage as a medical reserve that can be applied to the soldiers when they are off the battlefield and in the medical care unit. Clearly, there is a lot ahead of us. Further drug development, commercialization, we require partnership between academia research and the industry, and also the dialogue with the Food and the Drug Administration. This is certainly a long journey, which has proven to be meaningful and fruitful. As an educator, I enjoy working with our students and collaborators to advance research and innovation. As scientists, we follow the belief that believe in dedication, diligence, collaboration, and serendipity in translating the basic findings with MG53 into reality for the savings of many human lives in the future. I thank you for your time and attention.